we're going to do a brief review of slopes. Let's say we have a line like this. We all know that because the line is going up, it has a positive slope. We also know that because the line is straight, the slope is constant. So a positive constant slope. Here's another line that has a positive constant slope, but because it's steeper, we know that it's more positive. So if this is a slope of 5, then this is something bigger, like 10, positive 10. This is a negative slope. It's negative, and we know that because it's going down. It's also constant because we have a straight line. Here's another, another n line with a negative slope that is constant. But this negative slope is more negative than the last one. So if this is negative 5 as the slope, this is something more negative, like negative 10. What if we have a curved line like this? There's not a constant slope. Right? We know that it doesn't have a constant slope. Its slope is changing because it's curved. The way that you find the slope at some point, right, some point, some point, is by drawing what we call the tangent line at that point and measuring that tangent's slope. So what is a tangent line? Well, for some given point, like this point here maybe, or any other point, the tangent line is simply the straight line that touches the curve only at that point. So here it is. At some value t1, we trace up to the curve, mark the point. Then you draw a straight line that only touches the curve at the point. That straight line is the tangent. Here's the tangent's slope. And that slope equals the slope of the curve at this particular point. Let's see the same thing done at a later point. So here's the next point we looked at. We trace up to the curve. We mark our point on the curve. Draw the tangent line, the straight line, which only hits the curve at this point. So here's the tangent, here's its slope, and that slope equals the slope of the curve at this particular point. We're going to do it one last time for a third point. All right. There's the tangent, there's its slope. That's equal to the slope of the curve at this particular point. So what did we notice? We noticed that whenever we have a curved line, the slope is changing. And this was reflected in the changing steepness of successive tangent lines. The first one here was not so steep. The next one was steeper. The last one was even steeper. So we like to represent motion using what's called position time graphs. That's where we plot the position on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. This is the graph. What we do is we put a position time curve inside of the graph. Right? So here's a curve, a PT curve, in the PT graph. And that curve, it's made up of a series of continuous points. Right? And we imagine that we just have so many points and they're so close together that they basically just make a straight line. But every point on this line is made up of a, an, a y value and an x value. The y value represents the object's position. Right? The x value represents the time that the object had that position. So what's happening in this case? the object is staying at the same position as time passes. So for example, at some initial time, if we trace up to the curve and come over, we see that the object is, let's say, two meters from the wall. At some later time, we trace up, and it's still at two meters from the wall. That's the y value for this point, which is later in time. Let's go to another point later in time and find its y value well, we go later in time, we move along the, the x-axis, trace up to the curve, and this point has the y value of 2 meters from the wall. I just made this number up. It could, be any, it, it could be any number. But what we've seen is that the object clearly isn't moving. And here's the trick with position time graphs. 
the slope of any position time graph, the slope, is equal to the object's velocity. So what's the velocity of a flat line? It's zero. And this agrees with what we already had recognized. If the object isn't moving, right, if it's staying at the same position, then clearly its velocity is zero. All right, what about a different position time graph, something like this? The question you ask yourself is, what's happening to the slope? Because that tells us what's happening to the velocity. So what we see is that the slope, the velocity, the slope is constant because this is a straight line, and the slope is positive because it's going up. So we have a constant positive velocity. If the velocity is positive, then that means the object is moving forward and again with constant velocity. What about something like this? We ask the same question, what's happening to the slope? We see that the slope is constant because we have a straight line. We also see the slope is negative because it goes down. That means we have a constant negative velocity. If the velocity is negative, then that means it's going backward. That's what a negative velocity represents. What about something like this, where we have a curved line? We still ask the same question. How is the slope changing? So what we do is we draw the tangent line at a few different points. Right? We draw the tangent line early on in time, like the tangent line here. Then we draw the tangent line a little later in time here. Then we draw the tangent line a little later in time. And we look at how the tangents, how the slopes, are changing over time. So initially, let's say at this point, right, we have this tangent line. A little bit later, right, this is later in time, we have this tangent line. And let's go a little bit later over to here, even later in time, we have this. So this is positive, this is more positive because it's steeper, and this is even more positive. So clearly, the slope is becoming more positive. That means the velocity is getting more and more positive. So the velocity is increasing, which says that there is positive acceleration. So that's one thing, that's one way a positive acceleration can appear on a position time graph. What about something like this? We ask again, how does the slope change? So we're going to look at we're going to look at t a time here. Uh, then we're going to move forward in time to here, and then forward in time to here. At each of those points, we're going to draw the tangent, and then we're going to evaluate how the tangent is changing. So early on in time, the tangent is clearly negative because it goes down. So we have a negative velocity. A little bit later, it's still negative, but it's not as steep. And even later, the slope is still negative, but even less steep. So the slope is getting less and less negative. Right? That means the velocity is getting less and less negative. And clearly, if it's getting less negative, that means the velocity is increasing, which shows us that there's a positive acceleration. So that's the second way that positive acceleration might appear on a position time graph. All right, what about this? Let's do the same thing. How does the slope change? We look at a point in time here, then we move forward in time, right? move forward on the x-axis to here. Look at that tangent line, so this tangent line. Look at this tangent line later in time. And we look at this tangent line later in time. And we see how the tangent, how the slope, is changing. So first, it's positive and fairly steep. Still positive, a little less steep. And look at that, still positive, but even less steep. So the slope here is getting less and less positive. That means the velocity is getting less and less positive. If the velocity is getting less positive, then the velocity is decreasing. And that indicates negative acceleration. Here's the last one we're going to see for position time graphs. On this curve, we're going to do the same thing. 
look at the tangent line, the slope here, and then look at the slope, the tangent line here, and the slope here. So in every one of these kinds of problems, right, with every single graph that we approach, every position time graph, we ask, how does the slope change? So early on, it's clearly negative. Right? Not too steep, but it is negative. A little later, it's still negative, but it's a little steeper. And here, it's still negative, but even steeper. So clearly, it's getting more and more negative. The slope is getting more and more negative, which means the velocity is getting more and more negative. That tells us that the velocity is decreasing. Getting more negative is decreasing. And that indicates that we have negative acceleration.